Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Increased inflammation is common with aging and implicated in many of the diseases of aging. Brazil nuts for overweight women was able to reduce some of the markers of inflammation as well as reduce gut permeability in this placebo controlled trial. The paper comes from a clinical trial run by a team from the Federal University of Visosa. How effective were the Brazil nuts? Let's have a look. Obesity is associated with chronic inflammation and also increased gut permeability, otherwise known as leaky gut. Brazil nuts may be able to help control the inflammation by bolstering antioxidant defenses. This trial investigated the effect of a calorie-restricted diet in conjunction with Brazil nuts on the inflammatory markers and gut permeability, and these were correlated with changes in the selenium levels. Brazil nuts, like many nuts, have a mixture of protein, fat, mostly unsaturated, and dietary fiber, which makes them generally a healthy food. Brazil nuts in particular are also a good source of selenium, which the authors have proposed as the main active ingredient in this study. We will get into the mechanisms and how much selenium is required a bit later. Let's look at the details of the study. It was a non-randomized, parallel, eight-week dietary intervention. From what I can tell from the paper, the study was made up of data from two cohorts, which happened at different times. So which group a participant was included in was determined by when they signed up. Therefore, it was not randomized. Both groups had a calorie-restricted diet, estimated to be 500 kilocalories less than their energy requirements, and specific menus were prescribed. The primary goal of the intervention was to see if this diet would reduce the weight of the participants by four kilograms. The inflammatory markers and gut permeability were secondary outcomes. One group was told not to eat any nuts, while the other also had eight grams per day of Brazil nuts, which should have included 347.2 micrograms of selenium. The salad dressing in the menus was different between the groups to equalize the macronutrient mix. The participants were all women who either had a BMI of over 27, but less than 30, plus one other cardiometabolic risk factor, or had a BMI over 30. They were aged between 20 and 55, with an average age of 34. Here are the results for the inflammatory markers. CRP was significantly decreased between the groups. However, I noticed that the control group saw an increase in CRP from 8.0 to 9.4, while the Brazil nut group saw a decrease from 7.1 to 5.6. And the change within the Brazil nut group on its own was not significant, only the change between the groups. Interleukin-6 also decreased significantly for the Brazil nut group from 11.0 to 4.8, which is 56% but not between groups, as the control group also saw a decrease, though not as large. The authors don't calculate whether it was significant within the control group. So perhaps this was more due to the low calorie diet and reduced weight. TNF-alpha, interleukin-1-beta and interleukin-8, all markers of inflammation, were significantly reduced by 78, 95 and 40% respectively from baseline and were also significantly lower compared to the control group. And unsurprisingly, the selenium levels of the Brazil nut group increased. The authors used this as a marker to confirm that the Brazil nut group were following the protocol. Before we get to the results for the intestinal permeability, a quick note on the test. Intestinal permeability, which is more commonly known as leaky gut, is a condition where the walls of the gut which are held together by structures called tight junctions between the cells become leaky. This lets substances get into the bloodstream, which do not belong there, such as bits of undigested food and toxins like lipopolysaccharides from bacteria. These substances cause inflammation, and so leaky gut is a major cause of chronic inflammation. As a note, this comes from a different paper, which was specifically on the test. At a high level, 
the subject for the test drinks a mixture containing two sugars, lactulose and mannitol. The ratio of these that appear in the urine is then used to estimate the permeability of the gut wall. Neither of the sugars are metabolized and when absorbed will be excreted unchanged. Both sugars are absorbed passively, but mannitol is a monosaccharide, which is to say it has a single carbon ring, while lactulose is twice as big and is a disaccharide. Mannitol is expected to be absorbed through the channels in the inner healthy gut wall, but lactulose is not. The ratio of mannitol to lactulose is a measure of how permeable the gut is. I found a reference that, that, that a value below 0.3 would be healthy. As a side note, I thought leaky gut was a reasonably recent idea, but apparently not, as this test has been around at least since the 1980s. The LM ratio did decrease, though it did this in both groups, and the difference between the groups was not significant. So it's possible that the reduction in weight was a key factor. As a note, I found the data for this test difficult to interpret as it was presented as deltas rather than absolute figures. But we can see from this graph that the LM ratio did decrease. The authors proposed that the main reason for the effects were because of the selenium in the Brazil nuts, as this was the main difference between the two diets. The protocol called for two units of Brazil nuts, which contained 347 micrograms of selenium, as well as the estimated 500 kilocalorie deficit. This was intended to lower weight and reduce fat mass while providing bioavailable selenium as selenium methionine. The weight loss and the selenium inhibited IKK, a signaling protein which activates NF-kappa B, which is again an inflammatory protein. Meanwhile, the selenium activated NRF2, which upregulates antioxidant defenses such as glutathione peroxidase and SOD. Through the reduction of reactive oxygen species and inflammatory cytokines, such as interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 8, this helped improve the health of the gut wall. As we just saw, selenium is a potent antioxidant. It's also important for correct operation of the thyroid gland. However, you can also have too much of it. According to the NIH, the recommended daily allowance is 55 micrograms and the tolerable upper limit is 400 micrograms. So the 347 micrograms was quite close to this figure. Overdosing has a range of symptoms, including hair loss, nausea, and dizziness. So how many Brazil nuts to eat? Brazil nuts come in different sizes, and the amount of selenium in them will depend on the growing conditions. But here is a calculation to see what a rough number would be. According to the USDA, the amount of selenium in 100 grams of Brazil nuts is 1,917 micrograms. Each nut, on average, weighs 5 grams. Therefore, on average, this would be 95 micrograms, meaning that one or two per day would seem reasonable. As a final note, I had a quick but non-exhaustive look in my supplement cabinet and found two, sel two with selenium a multivitamin with 35 micrograms, and an immune support supplement with 50. The point being that it would be good to check what other sources of selenium you may have and be cognizant of your total intake. And a check on the funding. The authors declared no conflict of interest, though the Brazil nuts were supplied by Econut, which is a seller of Brazil nuts. I like this because it was a trial rather than an observational study, as so many food-based studies are. And it did show significant results over and above the low-calorie diet. I was also not fully aware of the link between Brazil nuts and selenium and how important it was to have the right amount, and in particular, not too many. As we age, inflammation generally increases, so an anti-inflammatory food is good to be part of your diet. Although you would think that this mostly makes sense for people who are a little bit deficient in selenium. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.